Hello everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Today's video is part of the Look for Less Challenge hosted by the lovely Yami from the Latino Next Door and this month's co-host and equally lovely, Courtney at Creative on the Cheap. If you haven't already, please check out their channels. Both links are below in my description box. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So today we're doing this super cute windmill from Wayfair for $46.99. I got my windmill at the Dollar Tree. Now I have watched quite a few YouTubers craft with the windmill from the Dollar Tree. They bring it out every year around spring with the summer decor. So if you don't get it this year, you should be able to eventually find it. But I've watched all these crafters, these cute gals tell me, you just bend the welcome sign back and forth and it snaps off really easy and that way you can save the welcome sign for another DIY. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just bending it. Well, I'm, I filmed this to show you guys how easy it is to get the welcome sign off. <laughs> so, I, this could have been part of a, a sitcom. But anyway, I won't be using that welcome sign for any DIYs, but I got it off and hey, at least the windmill works. <laughs> and I tell you, all you lovely people, if you had been in the room with me while I was filming, you would have just heard me laughing hysterically. I'll tell you, the struggle was real. Anyway, I'm taking chocolate sprinkle from Apple Barrel Paint here, black and white, and I'm going to start painting the bottom wood piece to make it a match, or as close to. Now I got my windmill about three months ago, but don't fret if you don't have a windmill because there are tons of YouTube videos to show you how to make them out of poster board and they look great. So first I'm going to start with black. For those of you that watch my videos, you know I love black as an undertone. It just really kicks it off when you're doing any kind of distressed old wood or if you're trying to make something fake look like wood at least 99.9% .9 of the time, and that's my opinion. I have seen people pull it off using white, but it just seems like they do a lot more paint and a lot more work <laughs> to get it there, but they can do it too. So there it is, and most of the white's on the left-hand side, the dry brushing, so I'm gonna try and get the white mostly on the left-hand side as well. Now, although I think the Dollar Tree windmill is actually very lovely as it comes, I was seriously impressed when I saw these. I thought, really? Oh my gosh, they are really upping their game. But the windmill I'm trying to copy is galvanized. And it has, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it has very distinct edges with straight lines. So this is sped up about eight times, but I am going super slow because I want those lines to be perfectly straight. Now I have to make this little guy match as best I can to the Wayfair one, so I'm using this color iridescent. Normally I don't think it matters, but especially with the iridescent paints, when you paint a shiny surface like this, like metal, it runs all over the place. So I've got another trick for you guys. You blow dry it. You blow dry it, it takes seconds to do. I know a lot of people will talk about Mod Podge, and that, and, and that is a good trick. Uh, to get stuff to stick, but Mod Podge has its own problems. Sometimes it rivets on shiny surfaces as well and leaves little streaks, so you risk getting a bumpy surface on an otherwise smooth surface, so I still favor the blow dryer and it's cheaper. And once you get your first coat down, you can put subsequent coats on no problem. I'm doing three coats. Oh, that's my cat again. I'm so sorry. I think this is going to be part of the program, you guys. Occasionally, you're going to hear my cat talking in the background and meowing. If I put him outside the room, he meows really loud. You can still hear him. If I let him in the room with me, he meows. I, I think he's stressed because I'm talking to myself lately and he doesn't understand because I've been making videos, so he's talking back. But sorry about that. Anyway, he's super cute. Here I'm galvanizing. Now the first thing I do is I do those little amoeba shapes, but now the original one from Wayfair really blends that out so you hardly see it, so that's what I'm doing. There it is. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do too. The amoeba shapes are there, but they're super soft and they're super muted, so that's what I'm going to be doing too. 
I should probably explain what I did. I just covered it with more iridescent and then at some point I kind of, I use a wet baby wipe and I kind of move to blend the iridescent and smear the gray before it totally dries. I was using pewter gray by Apple Barrel by the way before it totally dries to kind of make it all blend together in a cloudy look more and it, it works like a charm. So here I am taking off the paint and I have to add those little stripes. Those are on the end. I don't know if you noticed that too on the original windmill, it's striped. The reason I zoom in here is I wanted to show you how simple it is to fix this if you make a mistake. If the line's too thick, you can literally, if you see, I just take my finger and wipe off the edge and it becomes a thin line. So if you guys do get your hands on these windmills from the Dollar Tree, and I, like I said, I'm pretty sure you eventually will because they come out every year because they're a really big hit. Um, if you do want to change it up a little bit, it's not hard to do. You can make corrections really, really easy. I also go back in and add some black because in some areas from the previous design they have silver showing and there's not enough contrast. And here I'm using hot glue to put it down on the wood. Now look what I found in my arsenal you guys. I was cleaning out my craft supplies and I found the super glue gel. I was so happy. And look, you can't even see where I glued it. It worked awesome. And of course I love this. It doesn't have as many blades as the original one but I actually prefer mine. I thought the other one looked a little too busy. This is so cute. I mean, I really love it. It's in my farmhouse hutch, right up on the top shelf in the, in the center. That's how you can always tell when I really love something. I put it in my farmhouse hutch in the center. But anyway, it's so cute, and I hope you guys get a chance to try this too. Again, make the windmill if you can't find it right away. They're easy to make, and they look just as convincing. Now my second project is also from Wayfair. I love Wayfair. It's these wooden wall sconces. And the first thing I do is I screenshot it and then go into my printing settings and print them up really big so that they're life size because I want to make them the same size. I do think that's, you know, whenever you can with the look for less challenge, you should try to make the same size. You know, it's kind of funny because I think <laughs> Now that I've had them on my wall for a while, I'm probably going to shave them down because I think short squatty ones will look cuter. But anyway, this is a look for less challenge, so I'm making them the same size. And I'm just cutting everything out. Now something really important to note here if you do this, you can see me being really picky and trimming off the tiniest part of white. When it comes to decoupaging paper, napkins, whatever you do, it's actually better to have an open seam the size of a hair, and I literally mean like a hair, than to overlap the paper. If you overlap, you will definitely see a seam that you cannot disguise or hide, and you'll make a right mess of it. So whenever in doubt, always choose to have a little hairline seam. So this craft was surprisingly more challenging than I thought it was gonna be, and I just think it's because I didn't, I don't know what I didn't do. But here's the thing, I didn't, this is my first print up. You're gonna to need to print up two because the front part is open, right? So that actually has to be bigger because it has to curl around. So you, you're gonna need two sizes. So ultimately this is the back that I'm doing right now and it's going to be mounted on foam board, but I didn't need to mount it on poster board and I certainly didn't need to cut it. So if you do this, do not cut your first one leave it all in one piece because when it goes in the back you're not going to see the words and that just makes it look more complete because the back you know the wood goes all the way down you don't see foam board oh well live and learn but you'll see me cutting the bigger one that's going to be the front in a minute the only positive thing about mounting it on the poster board was that it was super easy to trace around <laughs> so i i'm cutting it right now because this is going to go on top of the foam board and I'm going to use it as a guide to trace the back of the sconce. And here I go.
Now I've always said it's super important to have a sharp knife with foam board because you know the edges need to look real and I'm showing you a little trick here up close. Do you see how when I'm cutting I'm pushing at an angle and I am damaging the outer edge of the part we're not going to use and not the part we're going to use and it's not so important in this craft because it's going to be covered up but when you need it to be important that's a really nice little trick to know as well. Um, if you need to rewind that but just kind of you press hard and you kind of angle your blade a little bit to the right if you're right-handed and I guess it would probably be the opposite if you're left-handed but then it tends to kind of chew up the edge that you're not going to use and save the edge that you are and make sure you have sharp knives you guys although I've got another trick coming up for you here in a minute <laughs> so sharp knives may not be so important after all Now I'm just situating it so it's where I want it to be. Now you're gonna see me add water into some Mod Podge here, and normally that's to keep wrinkles out of the paper, but here's a little trick. If you add too much water, it will cause wrinkles. And that's exactly what I want, because when you're trying to do faux wood, you need to create as much texture as you can. You just need to do whatever you can to aid in trying to get people, you know, the human eye to believe it's real wood when they look at it. So you're going to see what happens here in a minute. And there it is. <laughs> We've got some grains, ladies and gents, if you're out there. But nice little trick. And now you can also see why I didn't need to cut it. I could have just glued the whole thing down covering that on the poster board, and that would have been nice. And I just did it to the other one as well. We've got some grains. And now I am, you know, gluing it back together, the part that I cut. Ah, oh, Holly. Anyway, so... I don't know, oh, I'm using flesh color and territorial beige, and see, this is why I got frustrated with this craft, because after printing it up, I just go and paint all of the paper anyway. So if I had to do it again, honestly, I would have just used poster board for the whole thing, painted the whole thing, and then just put carbon paper underneath and used it for the words only like I had planned on doing in the beginning. And probably the carbon paper would have been a, like a perfect print for you know, it would have been kind of faded and looked, it just would have been better. So this was a craft where I was definitely, and, and that happens to the best of us when you're crafting, after you do it, you think, you know, <laughs> shoulda, woulda, coulda. But I'm really happy with the way it came out. You know, I saved the day, but it was way more work than it needed to be. And, you know, if you guys do make it, I'll show you how you curl a foam board later in this video as well. But just use the foam board right off the bat and you'll see why when you're all done watching this video you will totally understand why Holly says just use foam board because all the little tricks I show you you can just use foam board so the original piece might be smooth for all I know I haven't touched it or felt it but it looks like real wood because it is a real wood however when you are making faux wood using paper foam board whatever you need to add characteristics texture in other words, you need to do more. You've got to up your game because if you just leave it flat, it will look like paper that's Mod Podged. You have to have something else so that when a person walks by and sees it on the wall, the brain just registers, oh, that's wood. If you don't do it, they'll say, oh, what is that? That looks fake. That looks like paper hanging on the wall. So really important. And there I am using, I said this was a paper towel roll in my last vid. That's obviously a foil roll. It has foil on it but any hard, really super thick roll just to kind of curl your front. And I'm starting now to attach it to the poster board and make my sconce. You'll also notice I added some back support at the bottom there. That adds weight and thickness and helps your faux pieces lay flush and flat with the wall because that's another eye-catching thing that gives away that something is fake is that it's floating off the wall because it's super lightweight. So you always want to add some weight on the bottom and that should work to um, make it lay flat on the wall. And we're about to come up to that important tip that I talk about why you don't necessarily need a sharp knife with foam board. But really, whenever you do cardboard and foam board, at least I'm going to, the next thing I show you, I'm always going to do because it adds so much realism. It's worth the extra time. And quite frankly, it's very relaxing to do. And here's another really important tip when you're trying to make something look like real wood. It can't have 
foam board edges. It can't have cardboard edges. It can't even be thin. So I take joint compound. It turns out to be too thin. So I go back to my spackling that I used in my last video. I had some left. So use spackling. That's better. It's really thick and nice. And I just kept dipping my hand in water. And I'm pointing out here that's too thin. <laughs> so I'm letting you know we need to do something about it. Now here is where you roll I don't know how many of you guys know this, but you can roll foam board. You can actually fill it. You have to go really slow in little tiny little sections, but you'll and you'll hear it breaking as you go, but it rolls beautifully. And that's what I was saying. I should have just did the whole thing out of foam board because I end up adding foam board on the top where the poster board is to add thickness. And it you know obviously would have been just easier to start with foam board. And I do spackling on the top there as well. And you can see the water. I'm dipping my hand in the water. I get a really nice, thick, smooth edge on every single edge. And it looks awesome. And of course, after that, I have to match the paint. And I go about, you know, painting the edges and dry brushing and making everything blend in. So we're adding more Mod Podge, and here's another little trick. When you add a little water, it helps with the wrinkles. When you add a little bit more, it gives you wrinkles. And when you add even more, well, you're gonna see. Now you do have to stay close to your craft when you do this because you do need to watch it and keep um, adjusting it on the sides. But Mod Podge when you add too much water actually balls up and rivets. You see that? And it leaves big chunky lines. Perfect when you are trying to emulate wood. It makes your wood piece look like it has full wood grain, nice and bumpy and it's just awesome the only downfall is you do you can see me blow drying because i like i said in the previous video i have the patience of a gnat so i don't like to hang around you can blow dry too but you do have to keep it it, it obviously is sliding off because it's so watery so it goes it wants to go towards the edges on the bottom so you have to keep brushing that and removing it as it's settling and riveting and making those beautiful wood grain lines and there it is and that shows a little bit of it there but here's a side by side comparison you guys and i don't know that's not too shabby i'm really pleased and here it is with some florals in it looks like wood i'm going to show you up close where those edges are they kind of remind me of those salad bowls from you know those wooden polished salad bowls because obviously mod podge even in matte has plastic in so there's always a little bit of a sheen but hey when you're making faux wood you've got to do what you got to do to make it believable when people walk into your home so maybe the real one isn't as shiny maybe it is but they are totally believable in real life and that's all i can ask for if you liked what you saw today on this channel please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe i'd love to have you until then breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy